high above the cerulean expanse of Earth, amidst the silent symphony of the cosmos, the Zentari flagship, a leviathan of metal and dark energy, loomed. General Zorak, its commander, stood on the bridge, his gaze fixed on the planet below. The mission was clear a simple reconnaissance of the planet's defenses in preparation for the Zentari expansion. What wasn't clear was the unease twisting in Zorak's gut, an instinct honed over centuries of interstellar conquests, whispering that this mission would not be like the others. As the Earth slowly rotated beneath them, Zorak's attention was suddenly arrested by a cluster of objects breaking orbit around the planet. Human ships, if the intelligence reports were to be believed. Primitive, outdated technology that should have posed no threat to the Zentari Armada. Yet, as the distance closed, Zorak's unease grew into something akin to admiration. The human fleet, vastly outnumbered and technologically outclassed, engaged with a ferocity that Zorak had never seen. Their ships darted across the void, their maneuvers unpredictable, exploiting weaknesses in the Zentari formations that Zorak hadn't thought possible. It was not just their tactics. It was their spirit. These humans fought with a tenacity that bordered on the reckless, a burning desire to protect their home against all odds. For the first time in his life, Zorak found himself hesitating. The Zentari had faced countless species across the galaxy, many of them fierce and brave. But none had displayed the raw determination and ingenuity of these humans. Their resistance was not the mere struggle of a cornered beast. It was the defiance of a species unwilling to yield even in the face of the galaxy's most formidable conquerors. A message blinked into existence on the main screen, a communication from the human fleet. Zorak expected threats, perhaps pleas for mercy. Instead, a simple transmission, images of Earth, its diverse landscapes, its myriad creatures, and its people. People who loved, who dreamed, who fought not just for survival, but for the very essence of what it meant to be alive. The message was clear. This was what they were fighting for. Zorak, whose existence had been defined by conquest and domination, found himself confronting a profound truth. Victory was not the annihilation of one's enemies. It was understanding what truly mattered. For the first time, he saw his adversaries not as targets to be eliminated, but as beings with their own hopes, fears, and the unyielding courage to face the darkness. In that moment, a seed of doubt planted itself in Zorak's mind a doubt about his mission, his people's endless expansion, and what it meant to be truly strong. The images of Earth and its defenders lingered in his mind, haunting him with their beauty and their bravery. The encounter had changed something within him. The once unwavering General Zorak now harbored questions that could not easily be dismissed. Questions about war, about his own role in the galaxy, and most of all, about the indomitable spirit of the human race. As the Zentari fleet withdrew to regroup, Zorak's gaze remained fixed on Earth, a planet of seemingly fragile beings who had shown him an unparalleled strength, a strength he now longed to understand. The return to the cold expanse of space did nothing to quell the storm raging within General Zorak. His command chair, once a throne of power from which he directed the might of the Zentari fleet, now felt like the seat of a profound internal conflict. The images of Earth and its defenders haunted him challenging everything he had believed about strength, victory, and the nature of his enemies. Zorak's mind replayed the battle, not the tactical maneuvers or the strategic implications, but the faces of the humans he had seen in those transmissions. Their determination, their willingness to face a seemingly unbeatable foe, struck a chord within him. For centuries, he had led his forces from one conquest to another, believing in the Zentari's divine right to rule the stars. Yet what divine purpose could justify snuffing out the fierce spirit of a race willing to stand against the tide? Seeking solace in the solitude of his quarters, Zorak accessed the Zentari archives, something he hadn't done in ages. He delved into the histories of the countless civilizations they had subdued, looking for something, anything, that might mirror the valor he had witnessed. Instead, he found a pattern of domination, of cultures extinguished and planets stripped of their identities. A legacy of victories, yes, but at what cost? His unrest led him to the forbidden human communications. Interstellar regulations prohibited the monitoring of a civilization's internal communications as a violation of their sovereign rights. 
but Zorak's authority allowed him to bypass such protocols. What he found was not the primitive savagery his superiors had painted, but a vibrant tapestry of cultures, rich in art, music, literature, and most importantly, an indomitable will to survive and thrive against all odds. The general found himself drawn to the stories of Earth's past, tales of resilience in the face of adversity, of unity against division. He saw reflections of the human spirit that had so confounded him in the battlefield, shining through even in their darkest hours. The more he learned, the deeper his crisis of faith grew. How could he, in good conscience, lead an invasion against a world brimming with such life, such potential? Conflicted, Zorak sought the counsel of his closest advisors, beings who had been with him through countless campaigns. He presented his dilemma under the guise of a tactical discussion, probing their thoughts on the morality of their conquests. The answers he received were uniform, a reiteration of the Zentari belief in their own superiority and the inevitability of their galactic dominion. The justifications rang hollow in Zorak's ears, the echoes of an ideology he could no longer blindly accept. The crisis reached its apex as Zorak stood before the Grand Council, delivering his report on the reconnaissance mission. As he spoke of human defenses and military capabilities, he found himself omitting his personal revelations. He spoke as the Zentari general they expected him to be, but beneath the surface a tumultuous sea of doubt and newfound respect for humanity threatened to break through. In the silence of his own mind, Zorak made a decision. His loyalty to the Zentari had been unwavering, but so was his newfound conviction. He could not be party to the destruction of such a vibrant world, of a species that fought with such heart. In that moment, General Zorak, revered commander of the Zentari forces, knew what he had to do. He would go to Earth, not as a conqueror, but as a supplicant seeking to understand and perhaps to aid in their defense against the coming storm. Under the cover of the galaxy's endless dance, General Zorak executed his most daring maneuver yet. With the stealth of a specter and the resolve of a martyr, he commandeered a small, unmarked scout ship from the Zentari Armada. Setting a course for Earth, he cloaked his intentions as well as his vessel, leaving behind a life defined by rank and conquest for one driven by a burgeoning need for redemption and understanding. The journey to Earth was a solitary one. Space with its vast emptiness offered Zorak a mirror to his own internal void, filled only with questions and a yearning for truths he had yet to fully comprehend. As Earth's blue visage grew larger on his approach, so too did the weight of his decision. He was not merely defying orders. He was turning his back on his species, on his very identity, driven by a force he could only describe as conscience. Zorak's arrival was anything but subtle. Despite his military prowess, he had underestimated the vigilance of Earth's defenses. His ship, designed for reconnaissance, not stealth, was quickly detected by an array of satellites that humanity had cobbled together from the debris of past conflicts and the ingenuity of their collective will. Within hours of entering Earth's atmosphere, Zorak found himself surrounded, not by the stars of his youth, but by the steel and determination of human military forces. Captured upon landing, Zorak prepared for hostility, for violence, even torture. Instead, he found himself the subject of intense scrutiny, curiosity, and surprisingly, a measure of respect. The humans, led by Sergeant Mia Flores, a veteran of Earth's skirmishes with minor alien threats, treated him with a wary kind of dignity. It was clear they recognized the significance of a Zentari general, adorned in the regalia of his rank, surrendering without a fight. In the confines of a secure military facility, Zorak began to understand the humans more deeply. Through interrogations that felt more like conversations, he shared his story, his crisis of faith sparked by the bravery of human soldiers, and his subsequent defection. Mia and her squad, comprised of individuals from various parts of the world, listened with a mixture of skepticism and fascination. It was through these exchanges that Zorak saw the diversity of humanity, not just in their appearances, but in their thoughts, their experiences, and their unwavering commitment to their planet and each other. As days turned into weeks, Zorak's initial captivity morphed into a tentative alliance. He provided insights into Zentari technology, strategies, and weaknesses, information that could turn the tide in humanity's favor, should the Zentari decide to invade. In return, he asked for nothing but the chance to learn, to understand the people whose courage had inspired his defection. 
It was during this time that Zorak, the alien general, began to transform. No longer the unassailable commander, he found himself grappling with the complexities of human emotions. Guilt, for the lives he had taken in the name of the Zentari. Awe, at the resilience of the human spirit. And, most surprisingly, a burgeoning sense of belonging. The earth and its inhabitants, with their chaotic beauty and indomitable will, offered him a glimpse of redemption, of a life filled with purpose beyond conquest. The alliance between General Zorak and the humans, initially built on necessity and mutual benefit, evolved into something far deeper. Zorak's insights into Zentari technology and military tactics proved invaluable, giving Earth's defenders an unforeseen edge. Under his guidance, human engineers reverse-engineered Zentari devices, adapting them into their defense systems, while strategists rethought their approach to combat, incorporating alien tactics that Zorak shared. The collaboration marked the beginning of a new era in human resilience and ingenuity, but Zorak's transformation went beyond the transfer of knowledge. Immersed in human culture, he experienced the vibrancy of Earth's art, the complexity of its music, and the richness of its literature. Each story, song, and painting revealed layers of human experience and emotion that Zorak had never encountered in the cold efficiency of the Zentari Empire. These expressions of hope, love, and struggle ignited a profound change within him, challenging his perceptions of strength and honor. Among his most impactful human connections was his friendship with Sergeant Mia Flores. Mia, a soldier who had seen the horrors of war yet maintained an unbreakable spirit, became a guide to the complexities of human emotion and morality. Through her eyes, Zorak saw the value of individual lives, the importance of compassion, and the strength that lies in vulnerability. Her courage in the face of overwhelming odds and her unwavering commitment to her comrades and cause inspired Zorak to reevaluate his understanding of leadership and duty. As Zorak's knowledge and tactics began to turn the tide in minor skirmishes around the globe, he also fought a more personal battle, a battle for his own soul. The guilt of his past actions weighed heavily on him, driving him to seek redemption not in words but in deeds. He participated in rescue operations, saving both humans and aliens caught in the crossfire of conflict, and worked tirelessly to broker peace among the various extraterrestrial factions that had previously seen Earth as an easy target. The culmination of Zorak's transformation came when a Zentari assassination squad was dispatched to Earth to eliminate the traitorous general. The news of his defection had finally reached his former superiors, and they had sent his former comrades to ensure his silence. The ensuing confrontation was not just a physical battle, but a moral one. Zorak, standing alongside his human allies, faced his past head-on, defending not just his new home but the ideals he had come to embrace. In the heat of battle, Zorak displayed a bravery that transcended the martial prowess he was known for. He protected his human comrades at great risk to himself, using his intimate knowledge of Zentari tactics to outmaneuver his pursuers. The fight ended with the capture of the assassination squad, whom Zorak then personally addressed, sharing his journey and the truths he had discovered about strength, honor, and the indefatigable spirit of humanity. The revelation of General Zorak's defection and his stand against the Zentari assassination squad became a beacon, igniting a flame of hope and solidarity across Earth. Word of his actions and the bravery of the humans who stood with him spread like wildfire reaching the furthest corners of the globe, and even piercing the veil of secrecy that shrouded the galaxy's political machinations. The tale of an alien general, fighting shoulder to shoulder with humans, reshaped public perception and diplomacy within the interstellar community. Within the heart of human society, Zorak's presence spurred a newfound unity. Countries and factions that had once been at odds now found common ground, bolstered by the shared goal of defending their planet from the looming Zentari threat. Zorak, with his detailed knowledge of Zentari military capabilities and strategies, became a central figure in Earth's preparations, symbolizing the planet's determination to protect their home against any odds. However, Zorak's defection also drew the ire of the Zentari Empire. The highest echelons of the Zentari military, viewing his betrayal as a catastrophic blow to their honor, and an unacceptable leak of their most closely guarded secrets declared him a traitor of the highest order. They dispatched an elite fleet, tasked not just with the recapture of the rogue general, but also with the subjugation of Earth as a demonstration of the Empire's might 
and to quell any thoughts of resistance among other subjugated worlds. The threat of an imminent Zentari invasion forced humanity to accelerate their preparations. Under Zorak's guidance, Earth's defenses were bolstered with hybrid technology, incorporating Zentari power sources and weaponry into human designs. Strategies were revised to account for the overwhelming firepower and numbers the Zentari could bring to bear, focusing on guerrilla tactics and the strategic use of Earth's terrain to even the odds. As the Zentari fleet approached, a clandestine meeting took place on Earth. Zorak, alongside Earth's newly formed United Command, initiated a desperate gamble. A series of preemptive strikes against the Zentari fleet's vanguard, aiming to disrupt their formation and buy more time for Earth's forces to prepare. The operation was a high-stakes test of the newly integrated human-alien defenses and a testament to the trust that had been built between Zorak and his earthly comrades. The battle that ensued was unlike any Earth had witnessed. Human and hybrid technologies clashed against the might of the Zentari, with Zorak at the forefront, wielding his intimate knowledge of his former comrades' tactics against them. The skirmishes were brutal, and the cost was high. But under Zorak's leadership, Earth's defenders achieved the impossible. They turned back the Zentari vanguard, delivering a significant blow to the invaders and demonstrating Earth's will to fight. In the aftermath of the battle, Zorak and his human allies emerged not just as victors, but as symbols of resistance against oppression. The unity and courage they displayed inspired not only humans, but also other species under Zentari dominion, sparking whispers of rebellion across the stars. Zorak's transformation from a feared general to a defender of freedom became a rallying cry for those yearning to break free from the chains of conquest and subjugation. In the wake of their stunning victory against the Zentari vanguard, Earth found itself at the heart of a burgeoning interstellar alliance. News of the battle, and of Zorak's pivotal role within it, had spread across the galaxy, igniting a spark of rebellion among planets and species, long suppressed by the Zentari Empire. This network of nascent alliances, drawn together by the common cause of resisting the Zentari's iron grip, looked to Earth as a beacon of hope and defiance. Zorak, understanding the delicate balance of power and the need for a united front against the Zentari, took on the mantle of diplomat. With Earth's leaders and the newly formed alliance, he worked tirelessly to solidify this coalition, sharing technology, strategies, and most importantly, the vision of a galaxy free from tyranny. His efforts, once thought impossible for a former Zentari general, bridged worlds and species, turning former foes into allies. As the alliance grew, so did its capabilities. Under Zorak's guidance, a plan began to take shape, a bold strategy designed to end the Zentari threat once and for all. This plan would require not just military might, but the collective will and resources of the entire alliance. Earth's victory had shown that the Zentari were not invincible, and now with a united front, there was a real chance for freedom. The final battle loomed on the horizon, a confrontation that would determine the fate of the galaxy. The Zentari, aware of the growing rebellion and the threat it posed, amassed their forces for a decisive strike. Their target was Earth, the symbol of resistance and the linchpin of the fledgling alliance. The planet prepared for siege, bolstering its defenses with every available resource, technology, and ally. The atmosphere was charged with a tense anticipation as every eye watched the stars waiting for the conflict that would decide their destinies. When the Zentari fleet finally appeared, it was as a dark cloud blotting out the stars. The Alliance forces, under Zorak's leadership, met them head on. Space became a chaotic tapestry of light and destruction, as ships from a hundred worlds danced a deadly ballet with the Zentari juggernaut. On the ground, human forces alongside their alien allies defended Earth's cities and landmarks with a ferocity that echoed the planet's first defenders who had inspired Zorak's defection. The battle raged for days, a relentless exchange of wills between the unyielding defenders and the vast Zentari forces. Amidst this chaos, Zorak found himself at the forefront of the conflict, not as a general commanding from the shadows, but as a warrior standing shoulder to shoulder with his comrades. His leadership, forged in the crucible of war and redemption, inspired acts of bravery and sacrifice that would become legend. In the battle's climax, a daring maneuver by the Alliance, leveraging a vulnerability in the Zentari strategy that Zorak had exposed, turned the tide. The Zentari fleet, 
caught off guard and outmaneuvered, suffered catastrophic losses. As the realization of their defeat sank in, the once invincible empire began to crumble, their command structure thrown into disarray. The aftermath of the Alliance's victory over the Zentari fleet marked a significant turning point in the galactic history, but the war was not over yet. The Zentari Empire, though severely weakened, still posed a threat with scattered forces regrouping for a final desperate assault. Earth, as the symbol of resistance and unity, prepared for what would be known as the Last Stand. In the tense calm before the storm, Zorak and Earth's leaders orchestrated a defense strategy that would leverage the strengths of the diverse alliance they had formed. The plan was daring, involving a series of coordinated attacks on the Zentari's remaining strongholds, coupled with a staunch defense of Earth. Every available resource was mobilized. Every person, human or alien, stood ready to defend the freedom they had fought so hard to achieve. As the Zentari forces made their final approach to Earth, the skies lit up with the glow of a thousand ships. The battle that ensued was a testament to the unity and determination of the Allied forces. Zorak, leading the charge, displayed a bravery that inspired all who fought alongside him. The conflict was brutal, pushing both sides to their limits. Earth's defenders utilized every tactic and technology at their disposal, fighting with a ferocity born of the knowledge that failure meant the end of their newfound freedom. In the heart of the battle, Zorak confronted his former mentor, the supreme commander of the Zentari forces. The confrontation was more than a clash of titans. It was a battle of ideologies. Zorak, armed with the belief in a galaxy where freedom and unity could thrive, fought not just for Earth but for the future of all civilizations oppressed by the Zentari. The battle between them raged, a duel that would decide the fate of the conflict. As the battle reached its crescendo, a surprising turn of events shifted the tide in favor of Earth's defenders. A faction within the Zentari, influenced by Zorak's defection and the Alliance's courage, turned against the Supreme Commander, choosing to stand with Zorak and the cause of freedom. This act of betrayal from within their ranks sowed chaos among the Zentari forces, leading to their ultimate defeat. The victory was hard won, with the skies above Earth and the ground below marred by the scars of battle. But as the last of the Zentari forces retreated, a sense of peace, long forgotten, settled over the planet. The last stand, as it would come to be known, was not just a victory for Earth, but a symbol of hope for the galaxy. The Alliance had held, proving that unity could prevail over tyranny. As the dust settled, Zorak stood among his comrades, human and alien alike, not as an outsider, but as a brother in arms. The war had changed them all forging bonds that transcended species and worlds. In the aftermath of their victory, there was much to rebuild, but there was also much to celebrate. The galaxy stood on the brink of a new era, one of peace and collaboration, with Earth at its heart.